you see growing in, in, in on the ground throughout this area is what's called lesser saladine. Uh, this is a, a plant that's, I, I believe it comes from Asia, that was brought into this country as an ornamental. And it's a, a beautiful plant, but it's gone rogue on us. Ten years ago, we didn't see this. The native plant, which is the uh, spring beauty. Uh, this used to be the predominant uh, uh, flower growing in our open areas uh, in, on the base of the woods. Until this critter came in, this uh, Lesser Saladine. Now it, it's the predominant one. That's the trouble with invasive, because it, it, this outcompetes our natives. A lot of the birds and other insects rely on the native flora for protection, for food and everything. And uh, in some areas now, certain birds aren't around. Some insects are going down because they haven't got the plant that they've evolved with and lay eggs on and eat. A lot of areas of, uh, we don't have milkweed and therefore the monarch butterfly just cannot to reproduce. It'll just have to take time to see what really happens if lesser celadine doesn't die out on its own because there's just nothing that we can do about it. Another bad one is um, uh, bush honeysuckle. Sometimes these things are really tough to get at. If we want to save our native flora and fauna, we've got to make sure that uh, we control these plants. There we got the rut out. But now we have a lot more. <laughs> but once you take it out by the roots, generally you don't have to worry about that one anymore. Bush honeysuckle, who was brought into this country probably in the early 1900s, alert 1800s, as an ornamental plant. Being it didn't evolve here, it doesn't have any diseases and, or insects that bother it. So it just uh, has a really a free lunch. So we'll walk up here and just see if we can find some other type of invasive plant that we're interested in removing. I thought when I retired, I'd spend more time fishing. I took up golf, so I play golf once in a while. But then there was this need to, to help this, our, our ecosystem around the, and our parks. Uh, I got involved in that. I generally work for no more than two hours when I uh, work out here. I used to work longer, but as I uh, mature, I find I just don't have the stamina to stay out much longer than that. Had my uh, my left hip replaced, and it was that went very smoothly. And within you know a year, I could go out and can walk and work in the woods again. And a couple years after that, my other hip started bothering me, and uh, I realized it's time to get that replaced. And this one gave me a little more problem because it got infected and I had to have it replaced again. Since then, and it's been uh, probably six years ago that I had that last hip replaced, I, I'm really almost back to normal. But I have to be careful going down hills and watch for things that I don't trip on because that can be a, a serious effect. We aren't going to get rid of all the invasive plants, but what we can do is cut them back a little bit so our native plants can come in. Well, I mean, not win it, but uh, we've made a lot of progress. When I, when I remember what it looked like here, and now the park feels it can start coming into some of these areas and planting things. But now, what happens when I leave? I need to have someone come and take over 
And one of the things that we're trying to do is get some weed warriors to adopt an area like this that we've already cleaned up quite a bit, but uh, to, to keep it uh, cleaned up. And uh, uh, it, it's a good concept, but uh, a lot of people don't want to do it. <laughs> Eventually, I think we'll, we'll get people that'll do that. I'm a, what's called a weed warrior supervisor, and, and I, can, I can help train people, and I can take groups out that aren't weed warriors and, and have them work, work with them to, to show them what plants to, to pull and which ones to leave alone. The weed warrior program was started in, in Montgomery County Carol Bergman, who is the uh, head ecolo ecologist at, in the park, uh, started this program, training people, volunteers, to go out into the woods to remove invasive plants. And this is growing now where there's, I don't know how many thousand weed, trained weed warriors. This morning we've got uh, two weed warriors uh, that are, uh, actually supervisors as well. They can take groups out uh, later on. They're both very experienced weed warriors. They've been in the program for many years. In this section, we've been working for about six months, five or six, all winter long. You've got to look at things over 10, 20 years. If you look at over just a few months, you're going to get really frustrated because it's just so much. You know, people try to help out in ways that they know they're not going to they're not going to wake up one day and say, "Well, that job is done." Um, but they think they can make some contribution in a small way, and maybe encourage other people to to try to help out too. Here, just you take this. I'll get another one. I'm sorry. That's a problem. We're really glad you're here. I'm new to the organized program, the Weed Warriors. I don't necessarily think that wildflowers are necessary to keep the globe spinning and people alive. I just think it's an aesthetic and ethical, you know, responsibility. It seems that some people can walk in a forest of green and just be happy that it's green and they don't look closely, but maybe that's a problem in all kinds of areas in our lives, you know, we're just not paying attention. So, and eventually it will become a problem on larger scales. You know, ecological imbalance causes all kinds of problems with humans, and disease is one of them. Violets that are coming up. It gives some satisfaction knowing that uh, it's kind of nice to do that, and you're helping the environment. I guess I'm gonna, I'll continue doing this until I, I, I really can't, <laughs> uh, and, and it might be getting close. <laughs>